Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Distance Learning. And as always, we're going to ground ourselves in God's Word and remember our identity, purpose, and action. Who are we? We're children of God, loved and saved by Jesus. What is our purpose? To make God known through serving leadership. And how do we do this? We love God and we love others. Well, as you know, we've been uh, looking for Mr. Van all over the world. And yesterday he sent this picture. Uh, and as I told you yesterday, it looked familiar. And it had been a place that I had been, but it seems like so long ago. Well, you're all brighter than I am. And, and someone uh, alerted me to the fact that Mr. Van is back. That's right. He's at the Concordia Center. He's back in our middle school and an early childhood center in Kirkwood. So welcome back, Mr. Van. We're so glad you're back. And here's the deal, boys and girls. Uh, with Mr. Van back, we can do some really cool things now. You see, this past week we've had the pastors from our association congregation sending us videos, and I've been playing them for you. But now that Mr. Van's back, we can do something even better. We're going to go into someone's house and see what's going on at breakfast. I decided to check in on Dr. Brogy. He's on our board. You know, some of you know him as Pastor Brogy at Wester, uh, Webster Gardens. And obviously he's a parent at CCLS. But we're going to check in with Pastor Brogy and see what's going on in his house this morning. Um, he doesn't know we're coming. So check this out. Do good. I didn't see you there. Uh, Mary Jane! The school's in the cupboard. Again. Uh, don't mind me. I was just <laughs> grabbing a coffee cup. Uh, I've been doing some work in the background. It's good to see you guys, though. I mean, I feel like I've just been stuck in my own house by myself for months. Well, I'm not by myself, though, am I? I've got my whole family here with me. And actually, that has a lot to do with the things that I've been working on lately. See... Uh, a lot of you know me as Pastor Jason Brogy, and I go to Webster Gardens, and I teach a Bible study, and sometimes I lead chapel for all of you, but I also work for Lutheran Hour Ministries, and lately we've been doing a lot of work talking about what it means to be a spiritually vibrant household. It's something that's been on our mind a lot. We've done a whole lot of research, and we've been looking at it, and what does it take to be a spiritually vibrant household, the sort of household where your faith gets nurtured, where you grow and become uh, closer to each other and closer to God, and, well, you know who you are. You know your identity. You know your purpose. These things get nurtured within your household. And so I, I've been thinking about it, and here we are during quarantine, stuck in our households, and now is the perfect time to be thinking about these things. So we did a bunch of research, and one of the things we learned is that spiritually vibrant households are places where people are talking about God together on a regular basis. They're having spiritual conversations together. So moms and dads and brothers and sisters and aunts and uncles and, and whoever lives in your household with you, you're talking about your faith. Another thing that we learned was that spiritually vibrant households are places where uh, spiritual practices are happening together, where people are doing devotions together, they're in the Word together, they're praying together and for each other. And the third thing we learned is spiritual, uh, spiritually vibrant households are hospitable. They're inviting people in. Well, I, I guess we can't really do that one right now, can we? We're, we're stuck within just our household. But those other two things, the, the talking about God and our faith and practicing spiritual disciplines, uh, praying, reading the Bible, those are things we can do together. You know, it's interesting. Uh, we learned that you're more likely to be a vibrant household if you have at least one person in the household who is coaching you, who is encouraging you to engage in these practices, to be praying, to be reading the Bible, to be talking about your faith. You need at least one person, preferably more. And what's really, really interesting to me is that if you had asked me before we did our research if who that person would be, I'd say, well, it probably has to be the mom or the dad in the household. But it turns out it doesn't. It can be anyone living in the household. And it can be multiple people. It can be the mom. It can be the dad. It can be a brother. It can be a sister. It can be you. As a matter of fact, it should be you. That kind of blew my mind. Anyone who's starting the conversation, 
who's encouraging prayer, who's saying, hey, it's Sunday morning. I don't want to convince mom and dad not to do church since we're stuck at home. I want to convince them to get online and to watch our church service. I want to Zoom one of my friends and say, how can I be praying for you? I want to write a letter. I want to encourage my mom when she looks down and frustrated or my dad when he looks like he's just fed up with Zoom meetings. Anytime you do that, you become a spiritual coach for the household and you become someone who's helping nurture the faith. You know, when I first heard this, this kind of blew my mind, but it shouldn't have. You know, in the Bible, Paul wrote a letter to, to one of the people who'd been helping him on his missionary journeys and who he was not currently with. He wrote it in 1 Timothy, and in the middle of that letter, he says something really interesting. He says, Timothy, don't think that just because you're younger, you can't help in the faith. As a matter of fact, he, goes, he has stronger language than that. He says, let no one despise you for your youth, but set an example for believers. Set the believers an example in speech and conduct, in love and faith and purity. Until I come, devote yourself to the public reading of Scripture, to exhortation, to teach. You see, as, as brothers and sisters in Christ, as a child of God, loved and saved through Jesus, you have a ministry you can do right now, even in quarantine, right with your household. You can be a note of encouragement. You can lift them up in prayer. You can talk about God with everybody in your household. And when you do that, you are spiritually coaching them. You're, you're nurturing the faith within your household. And when someone does it for you, they're nurturing your faith. They're helping you out. So... I know we're still stuck and we see a glimmer of light at the end of the tunnel that soon, hopefully, we can throw open our doors. But until we get there, let's um, grab something to drink and maybe sit down with one another and talk about the things that really matter. Talk about the things that make us happy. Talk about the things that make us sad. Talk about the fact that we are children of God. And even though you're younger... You might be five listening to this. You might be 12 listening to this. You might be 13 listening to me right now. You still can play an important role. Would you pray with me? Almighty Father, I give you thanks that regardless of our age, whether we're young or whether we're old, that we can still be about your mission work right now, that we are children of God, loved and saved through Jesus, and that we can share that good news with one another. We can encourage one another in the kingdom. We can pray with one another. Send your Holy Spirit to fill us with joy and to help us do these things. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, well, as you can hear, there's someone mowing in the background, and uh, I probably should get back to work and all that stuff. So I'm going to fill up my coffee cup and get back to work, and you should probably leave my cupboard sometime soon, huh? Well, thanks, Dr. Brogy, for that message and uh, for allowing us uh, to step into your kitchen this morning. I really appreciate uh, your work with Lutheran Hour Ministries and your support for CCLS. Uh, now we're going to move on to announcements. Uh, creative Time Duolingo Challenge, it's up. So check in your uh, lessons if you want. You can email it to me. Tell me how many lessons you uh, were able to complete over the week. Uh, maybe four, maybe five, maybe 20, maybe 30. Who knows, if you have more lessons than me, though, I will take the ice bucket. And I'm sure I've got one or two people in my household that would love to dump it on my head. Um, but to do that, you need to send me how many lessons in Duolingo you completed. Again, it could be any language, Spanish, uh, French, German, uh, you pick it. Um, tell me how many uh, lessons you completed. And send that in today, and I will uh, uh, tell you the winner on Monday. Okay? Today is Student Appreciation Day. It is Friday, folks. Uh, we have completed the last day of instruction for the 2019-20 year. Congratulations. I am so proud of all you students, uh, your diligence, uh, your, your courage through this time, and uh, just your, the responsibility you showed. You, you, you met the need according to your ability. And uh, I, I just thank you and your parents for all you've done. We've got a special treat for you today. If you can stop by from 12 to 1.30 to pick up some ice cream, uh, your teachers are going to be at your campus, whether it's elementary or the middle school. 
Um, we, K through 8, we're going to be there to, to celebrate you today. And, uh, you know, if it rains, so be it. You know, we figured out how to do distance learning in COVID-19. We'll figure out how to get you ice cream and rain. So uh, come on out. I know your teachers want to see you. And uh, let's celebrate. Now let's uh, turn to our morning prayer. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. And I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul, and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Have a great day in the Lord, everyone. I hope to see you out at the, one of the campuses. Take care.